In today's video, with the help of the cadavers here in the lab, we're gonna take a look at three of the coolest things that action video games do to change your brain. It's gonna be a fun one. Let's do this. Now, the most obvious statement of the day, there are many different types of video games. You have real-time strategy games, role-playing games, puzzle games, so on and so forth. In fact, you can even mix them together to create extremely challenging, yet still fun video game experiences. But each of them are gonna come with their own positive effects on the brain, as well as their own negative effects. And I decided to focus today's video on the positive effects because the negative ones are pretty well established and also tends to be more or less all you hear about these days. But we will definitely address those negative effects in a later video. But today we're specifically gonna be focusing on action games or what should more probably appropriately be called shooter games. So this is gonna be things like Call of Duty or Halo. And the first thing they do that's amazing is they improve your attention allocation. You are looking at the right hemisphere of the human brain. Now I wanna give you a really brief tour of the area so you have a generalized idea as to the functions of the different regions. So right here, we're looking at the frontal lobe or the frontal cortex. Now this is going to be in charge of a lot of different things such as your personality, which includes morality, empathy, um, as well as just rational decision making, but it also includes your motor cortex. Then behind it, we have the parietal lobe or the parietal cortex. Now this is going to have a lot of incoming information going into it to be processed from various parts of your body. So if you poke your arm, well, that is going to be processed, that sensation in your parietal cortex. This area here is called the temporal lobe or temporal cortex, and this is where auditory processing occurs. So the sound of my voice right now coming out of what I imagine to be your phone is going to be processed in the temporal lobe. And then behind it right here, we have the occipital lobe or the occipital cortex. And this is where the visual processing is going to occur. So when you're watching this video right now, I am technically in the back of your head, as creepy as that may sound. Now, when it comes to attention allocation, what that means is choosing what to focus your attention on. Right now, you're choosing to hopefully focus your attention on the phone or on this video that you're watching. But there's a lot of other things happening around you that you are choosing to ignore. Well, what they find is that gamers who play shooter games have, they're better, they're more efficient at allocating their attention. So think about it. If you're playing a shooter game like Call of Duty, there's gonna be a lot of flashes and sounds. So what's gonna be happening is the visual cortices as well as the temporal cortices are going to be firing like crazy and they're gonna to have to be communicating with the frontal cortex to determine how to prioritize which of the flashes, which of the sounds, right? There's so many different things all happening at once and what that does is it just makes them more efficient. Now, they've actually done brain imaging on gamers who play shooter games and found that they have actually less blood flow going to the area. There's less activity happening in this, which sounds counterintuitive. You'd think if, if you know, you're playing a shooter game and so much is happening that the brain is gonna be firing like crazy trying to you know, compensate, but instead, it's more efficient. The areas are more efficiently communicating with one another, making or meaning there's less activity. It's absolutely cool. Gamers are just really good at keeping their attention. And well, speaking of keeping, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Keeps. Keeps is a subscription service devoted to helping men keep their hair. They do this through clinically proven treatments with most customers seeing results around six months or so after starting treatment. These treatment plans are affordable and they're delivered right to your door. The fact is two out of three men will experience hair loss by the age of 35. I'm 34 years old. Everybody look at my hairline. Look at how far back it's gone. It's, it's basically gone. You do not want to be me. Instead, if you see those early hair loss symptoms, you're gonna wanna get on this right away and use these doctor recommended treatment plans. And here's the cool part. You don't even have to visit a doctor's office or a pharmacy. Plus, you'll even get refill reminders so that you can never run out of the products that you need to take care of your hair. Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get 50% off your first order, visit keeps.com anatomy, or you can just click the link in the description below. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash anatomy. All right, let's get back to it. Next on our list is a higher spatial resolution with visual processing. Now, I know that sounds wordy, 
but you could think of spatial resolution as it pertains to the human visual system as just being how much detail can you see as you're looking at something. And there's a lot that goes into it. How much light is present? How much contrast is there? What's the density and type of the photoreceptors in different aspects of your eye? There's, a, again, a lot that goes into it. But for humans, the longer you look at something without moving your eyes, the more detail you're able to see. Now, I have an experiment for you that you can do there at home. And all you gotta do is focus on something around you. You can pause the video if you'd like and just focus on something around you and do everything within your power to not move your eyes. And what you'll notice is more and more detail will start to emerge. Now, obviously there's a limit to this. It's not as though you could stare at something and all of a sudden your eyes turn into microscopes, but it's absolutely cool to see that when your eyes aren't moving, you can extract more detail. As amazing as that is, it's even better in gamers that play shooter games. And it's not all that surprising when you think again with all they have to focus on and their, draw their attention to, well, when they're focusing on an area, they need to extract as much detail about them. You don't know, maybe there's a sniper or something. You're pinned down and you're trying to determine the location of a sniper. You may not be moving your eyes all that much given what you're looking at on the screen and you're able to extract more detail from what you're seeing. Now, neurologically, if we go back to this brain here, this is pretty much happening within the occipital cortex and the parietal cortex. And what's happening is there's various visual pathways that are communicating within the occipital cortex as go and also going into that parietal cortex. So basically, it's just firing, going back and forth and all throughout, and the brain is just, for gamers that play shooter games, that is, more efficient. Again, it's just better at talking to itself. And last on our list is an enhanced ability to mentally rotate objects. And again, this is probably gonna make a ton of sense. Picture yourself in a shooter game and maybe you're lobbing grenades and as you're throwing them, you have to mentally picture what's on the other side. Or maybe you're running through a map and you're jumping in all these different places and you're coming up to something that you actually can't see but your mind has to, again, rotate the map around so that you land in the right area. There's an infinite amount of ways we can you know, think about this. It just makes a ton of sense that gamers would have an improved ability at this. And this mental rotational ability happens between three of the different cortices. It happens between the temporal cortex, the parietal cortex, as well as the occipital cortex. And look, you can do an experiment right now at home. Um, I often do this with my students to kind of show them what their own limitations with their mental ability to rotate objects are. So go ahead and close your eyes. And I want you to picture, say your house or wherever you live. Can you picture that building from the outside as though you're a bird flying over? Now, can you start spinning your house around? Could you rotate it upside down, right? And you can keep on going with this thought experiment to see just how good you are at rotating these mental objects. I often describe it to my students as an architect's brain, right? Would you be able to build and deconstruct things all in your mind well, if you can, then maybe you'd make a great architect. Well, it just goes to show that shooter gamers have an improved ability at this when compared to those who do not play shooter video games. Absolutely fascinating. Now, while I only discussed three of these positive things that happen to the brain from playing video games, I just wanna remind you there are a ton of other positives that happen to the brain and even other parts of your body. But there, again, there are also a lot of negatives that happen to your brain and other parts of your body. I want you to know that this is the first part in a series of videos that I wanna do that's exploring what video games do for the mind and body. And the reason why I'm doing this is not because I myself don't really play a ton of video games, as much as I'm interested in things like virtual reality, augmented reality, and things that are definitely in the pipeline that are gonna be coming down that all of us are going to be participating in. So for me, understanding what video games do to the brain is just super interesting because I know it's going to play a role in how technology starts just merging more and more with our everyday life. But I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Again, be sure to click the link in the description below for keeps, get 50% off your first order and you won't look like Justin with his receding hairline or pretty much absent hairline. But as always, be sure to like, comment, subscribe if you feel so inclined and I will see you in the next video.